Indiana Hoosiers. Hi everybody, I'm Gary Bender along with Billy Packer. And Billy, Indiana off to a good start. They feel maybe this is their best ball club since they last won the Big Ten title in 83. I'd have to agree. This is an outstanding team, a very athletic club. The junior college additions to this club have been very helpful to Bobby Knight. And Ohio State's been very surprising. Well, they have, but today is a game for Gary Williams. He has to prove he can play Bobby Knight in a Big Ten game, so it's quite a challenge. The Hoosiers and Buckeyes from St. John Arena. We'll be back to start this game in just a moment. Surprising Ohio State unbeaten at home thus far this year, 6-0. Let's take a look now at their opponents. The Hoosiers of Indiana, ranked sixth in the country. Darrell Thomas, six foot seven, senior at one forward. And Rick Calloway, the Big Ten freshman of the year, the other. There's one of the junior college players Billy was talking about, Dean Garrett, at the center spot at 6'10". Alfred, their MVP the last three years. And Keith Smart, the other junior college player from Garden City. Hobson averaging 30 points a game. Along with Jerry Francis, their power forward at 6'5". John Anderson, a surprise this year at center. Burson weighs only 142 pounds, but he can shoot the ball. And Curtis Wilson, he'll be the point guard for Gary Williams' team. Joe Sylvester will be putting the ball up at center circle as Bob Knight returns to his alma mater where he played on that national championship team in 1960 and Ohio State with the tip. Curtis Wilson, the junior, he's really not an ideal point guard. They'd like to have him the second guard, but he's had to take that role. Off to Anderson, a six foot nine junior, who has been a pleasant surprise. You see Garrett's gonna lay off Anderson. Anderson's gonna have to take the shot or pick up the slack a little bit so he can create a passing lane there. Hobson, off to Anderson, and Anderson gives Ohio State the lead. He did exactly that. He was out at the top of the key, moved into the foul line, had the good shot. Garrett's going to let him have that shot early. Billy, this is one of the big stories, how they can handle Ohio State's pressure. First time they do very well. And you'll notice that Alford very seldom helps with handling the pressure. He goes down to get in a shooting position. Calloway, the 6'6 sophomore out of Cincinnati. Defense really packed in. 2-3 zone that Gary Williams used a great deal at BC. Hart partially blocked by Hobson that time. Curtis Wilson on the move now for the Buckeyes. Baseline, and he had to get rid of the ball. He got hung up in the air. Burson retrieves it, and he'll bring it out. Burson's an odd player in the fact that he's not a great pure shooter, although he's the leading scorer in the history of the state of Ohio as a high school player. You look at him, looks like he came to the wrong game. Should be in the junior high game. He can play, and there it's going to go off of Indiana. Ohio State will reset it. 2 nothing in the early going is Gary Williams in his first year as coach of the Buckeyes after four years directing the fortunes of Boston College. Indiana man to man out of bounds. Wilson went right by. But that was blocked by Callaway. Went right by Alford. There is Alford. Alford. And he is able to tie it up. Well, Steve Alford had a rough time last year against Ohio State. Played him twice, got 32 both times. So <laughs> that's not surprising he'd hit that one early. He comes in averaging 22 for the season thus far. Not shooting as well as he has in the past. Shooting 46% from the field. But over 50% from the three-point line. Isn't that amazing? There's going to be a foul on Dean Garrett reaching in on Jerry Francis. Good to see Wilson going right by Alford. Now, Alford should have been attacking on the baseline side. You notice he went out defensively on the outside and allowed the, the open lane for Wilson. A great help out by Callaway. Not a good defensive play by Steve Alford. One thing that Bob Knight has this year, though, is that shot blocker in the middle and Dean Garrett, and a guy that'll rebound for him. And a new red sweater instead of those old sport coats. <laughs> Did you talk to him about his attire before this game? No, he started that with the Olympic when he was coaching the Olympics. He used to have those three Olympic sweaters they'd give him, and now I guess uh, probably Adidas. So you think he's got that Adidas logo on there. What is it, free? You take yeah, something well, free? I guarantee you. <laughs> Here is Francis making it 4-2 in favor of Ohio State, and that's going to be off of Ohio State. Nice piece of refereeing right there. Wilson did get a piece of it, and there's where the three officials had an opportunity to cover the court. This game's going to move up and down the floor. One thing about Gary Williams' team, he likes to have the good condition because they'll pick you up full court the entire game. And he inherited a ball club that's not very deep, so that helped, hurts him somewhat there. That's a three-point attempt by Alford. Out it comes to Wilson, to Burson, and Burson can't track it down. A turnover against the Buckeyes, so it'll go to Indiana. If you're going to be a running team, you are going to throw the ball away some. 
there was a case where Wilson could have driven that ball to the top of the key and done a little better job than throwing it cross court. Well, Alper will bring it up now for Indiana. You can hear that hairball can in the background, the sellout crowd here at St. John Arena. Well, that wasn't unusual. When Alper shoots from beyond three-point range, he very seldom hits anything, but normally goes in the bat and out over it. There's Thomas missing. Oh, what a leap by Hobson. Hobson at six foot five. He is the senior out of Toledo. He'll put it up. Rebound tipped out to Alper. Hobson has just been superb. He, along with David Robinson, leading the nation in scoring at this juncture. Here's Dean Garrett. It won't go for Garrett. And Francis, their power forward, comes out of there with it. Well, we talk about all the guys with 40-inch vertical leaps playing in this game. Francis' vertical leaps about four inches. He's only six foot four and a half, but does the job inside in the Big Ten. And he's built like a linebacker. Burson moving in, and he is fouled. Now that's the type of shot that Gary Williams says Burson likes. A floating shot on the inside. He's not a pure shooter, but he's a big scorer. Burson had a serious injury in May. He was in a pickup game here in St. John Arena. He was knocked to the floor, suffered a broken collarbone, a concussion, a loss of memory, and in fact, Burson was in intensive care for 72 hours and has come back. As you see, Tony White now checking into the lineup for the Buckeyes, but Burson's not a very big guy to start with, and they wanted to put some beef on him, but due to that injury, he's probably gone down in weight. That one 52 can't be close. 145, I heard. I, mean, I, I, I can't imagine that he weighs anything much over 140. And we kid him about the fact he doesn't look big enough, old enough, or mature enough to play in this league, but don't, don't kid yourself. He knows what he's doing out there. Had a little altercation be between Darrell Thomas and Francis on that last play. There's Indiana throwing the ball away. So Indiana having some problems with the pressure. Bob Knight, who they say is a little more reserved when he comes to his alma mater to coach right now, not with any antics on the sideline. I was surprised that Alfred and Thomas would draw on back and forth with each other. Over Garrett, up to Anderson on the jump hook, and then we have a foul on Jerry Francis. Francis committing his first foul. You can see that Dean Garrett really is at 27 shots blocked already this year. He altered that shot. Held Purvis Ellison to eight, although Purvis is having some trouble getting the ball inside, so it's not totally Garrett's to his credit, but he did an excellent job there. He'll be a good defender in the Big Ten. Indiana trying to settle down now against this pressure. Up it comes to Callaway. Callaway, the 6'6 sophomore, nails it. Callaway, you can see, playing with a heavily taped knee. He hurt that and missed six games this year. He's got a great jump shot, a super penetrator. One of the better young players in America. Ohio State by two. Anderson off to Francis. Good ball movement this time. Burson inside. Well, oh, oh, oh. oh, you're not going to get that shot off. It's retrieved nicely by Tony White. Francis. That should be offensive. That's what it is. That's a great call by the official. Garrett went up. The only thing Francis could do was push him off with a left arm. That is an excellent call. That's the second foul on Francis. Now there's a, when you see a good shot blocker, he didn't use his body at all. He's going to watch. Play comes across. Person goes inside. No place to go in there and gets it blocked. But that last play by Garrett was excellent. Indiana again having difficulty with this pressing defense. They get it off to Callaway. Callaway, the lean in. Oh, is that pretty? He can glide as well as anybody in the game. And Indiana now is pulled even at six. Explosive score. This Indiana club really has everybody on the, on the floor can have a good game offensively in terms of the number of points they can put up there. Foul inside goes against Indiana. Ohio State hit their first shot. They've now missed their last four as they've struggled somewhat. Coming into the ball game now is Keith Wesson, a six foot nine senior. We'll be back. It's all even at six. CBS Sports presents NCAA Basketball. Today's game between the Indiana Hoosiers and the Ohio State Buckeyes is sponsored by Budweiser. Beachwood age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. You go. Everybody needs a you go sometime. And by Prudential Page Securities. Rock solid, market wise. Welcome back to St. John Arena. Gary Bender along with Billy Packer as Ohio State and Indiana deadlocked at six, inbounding the ball be Curtis Wilson for Ohio State. And you notice Indiana goes man-to-man -man out of bounds. You expect a lot of people to try to score immediately against that man-to-man. -man. Good rebound by Callaway. Well, he just kept climbing in the air, didn't he? 
Turner offered to pull up and take that jumper. Here's Key Smart instead to try one, and Indiana now has the lead. That's their first lead of the game, eight to six. There's a case, another half step, and you're back behind the three-point line. You think it's a while to get conscious of where that is all the time? I definitely think so, but in the case of Smart, Bobby Knight doesn't have him looking for that three-point line. He just wants him to play naturally. Good hustle by Callaway, and that's going to be a turnover against Ohio State, their third. Tony White could not come up with it. And now the Buckeyes with that patented full-court pressure that Gary Williams' team's so well-known for in the years at Boston College. So very difficult to press a team as experienced as Indiana, particularly if you don't have the depth. Smart to try again, and he's hit two in a row now. Well, there again, a fellow with a 40-inch vertical leap, and that's a genuine who also has the soft top touch with the jumper, is hard to handle. Can you believe he was five foot three and grew nine inches in one six-month period? I mean, it's amazing how quickly he's come out and become a quality player. Indiana with eight unanswered points now with his four-point lead. And check the zone, two-three zone by Bobby Knight. Kind of surprised they changed defenses there. Their man-to-man -man was so effective. Tony White hitting. What was it? The first time in 14 years Bobby used the zone. That was against Notre Dame. And for a specific reason, to try to cut Rivers off a little bit. Good steal by Burson. Burson up with the steal. Chance to tie it up now for Ohio State. 14-38 to go in the first half. And they go back to that 2-3 zone. And it goes now to man who just checked in Wilson a while ago. Wilson will kick it back out. Wilson coming off of some knee problems, too. He hurt his knee after the first game of the year. He got a big tip in to beat Kansas over in Hawaii in the Rainbow Classic. Gary Williams not only inherited a team without a lot of depth, he had everybody hurt on the ball club, basically, that he had to work with. I thought it was interesting. He said he's going to have open tryouts to let the students come out. One of the keys, he said he cut on the first day all guys that showed up wearing black socks. <laughs> Pretty good intuition. <laughs> That's not bad, right? That foul going on Daryl Thomas. That's his first. Fourth team foul now against the Hoosiers. Gary Williams really giving Hobson a long rest here. He could use him for that three-point outside shot right now. Tony White gets it inside. Cross court it goes now to Wilson. Wilson's missed two of them, but we have a foul spotted. It's on John Anderson of Ohio State. Anderson with his first foul. You see a little of that Tom Davis influence with that bounce pass inside against the zone. Good cross-court passing. The execution was there for Ohio State. They just didn't get the shot off. Speaking of Tom Davis, he's in the Big Ten now. He's at Iowa, and of course, he and Gary Williams, who coach together at BC, will be going against each other. He's at Iowa and undefeated, 13-0. Three teams in the top ten in the Big Ten Conference. They had four for a while, Illinois dropping to 16. Indiana will reset it. Here's Thomas. Thomas, six foot seven, a senior out of Westchester, Illinois. Steve Alford, Good beautiful pass. pass to Smart. You know, the Smart, with, with that great leaping ability, he never worries about having to go catch that ball. He just went up as high as he had to. Good he had, look by Alford. He has six points. He's averaging just under 10 a game. 12-8, Indiana. Burson from outside. That'll be a three-point shot by Jay Burson, and he cuts it to one. And one thing that that Ohio State has a lot of confidence in. They have been behind by as much as 15 points in games that they've come back to win. Good defense. That'll be a charge on Rick Calloway. One of the things, Gary Williams, with a pressing team, sometimes you have those droughts in a period where a team scores easily against you, but then you have those good runs of your own. So it's the kind of club that can get down and then explode to get back in the ball game. They were down by 15 to Florida and came back and won. Well, they trailed Dayton too, didn't they? Came back in that game. And there's a foul pushing inside. Right now, let's go now to Jim Nance. All right, Gary. Dennis Hobson, the top gun for the Buckeyes, coming off that 36-point performance, has an upset stomach. He should see more action today, but that is why he's on the bench right now. Let's go back. Let's go 